Good morning from Wyoming. My, my wife tends to buy whatever's on sale. She just buys the cheapy coffee. And so on any given day, we're drinking whatever. And some days it's just really good. And it makes me realize that sometimes the name brand stuff, you're just paying for the package and not for the quality of the stuff. By the way, it's really hard to find 20 ounce coffee cups. And I used to go into Starbucks and I noticed that they had these really killer 20 ounce mugs that were not for sale. They were only for if you drank coffee in the restaurant. And one of my students, turns out, was the manager of the Starbucks, and I was lamenting to him that they didn't sell these cups, and he was kind enough to bring me one as a gift, so thank you so much. Probably illegal, he probably stole it. I won't say his name, but it's my favorite cup. So I'm starting a vlog series. I'm gonna do a daily vlog because my son Jordan and I are heading to Grappler's Retreat in Mendocino, California in a few days. We're taking a road trip. Can't wait. If you're not familiar with Grappler's Retreat, it's this beautiful, picturesque location in the rugged northern California coastline right on the ocean. Beautiful location, killer food, and you basically train jiu-jitsu all week long with amazing instructors. This time it's Vlad Kulikov, amazing jiu-jitsu, sambo, and judo guy, and Mike Palladino, who is a top competitor, just an amazing athlete and really uh, a good, solid instructor as well. So I'm looking forward to going up there, spending some time with those guys. Roy Dean was up at the camp a couple weeks ago, and he just raves about it. That's his second trip out there. Should be a great trip. I've got a ton of stuff to do to get ready to go. So come along. I hope you enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to sharing this experience with you guys. So since I'm getting all my camera gear organized today, one of the things that I thought I would do is reconfigure my office because this is just an illusion. So if I'm gonna be filming in here, I need to solve some things. Originally, my desk was in the opposite direction and I flipped it around so I could film toward the pictures, which looks cool. The problem is I've got this eGPU unit sitting on the corner of the desk and the reason it's sitting there is because I hardwired it, cable tied under the desk and so when I flip my desk around, the eGPU is now on the wrong side and it gives me a real narrow lane to film in and it looks cool, it's fine, but I don't have any space on my desk on that side, so I need to reclaim that space. I figure since I'm getting my camera gear ready to go for this trip, I'm gonna reorient um, the eGPU and see if I can claim some space here. Mr. Roy, what's up? What are you up to? I am just retooling some things down in my office to make filming a little easier. What are you doing, man? I am, dude, I was hoping you could help me uh, test out some video equipment on my end. Yeah. I'm trying to get some um, remote lessons going here. And uh, I think I want to use Google Meet and record. So would you be able to, to um, open the invitation and check out uh, if this is gonna work? Yeah. Yeah, send it my way. Okay, that's an even more open view. Is that about the right perspective, do you think? Yeah. I'm using the phone right now. Yeah. And how's the quality? It's good. Yeah, it's good. You should, do you have it on a little tripod that you can move it around? I do, I do. Oh. Yeah, so I can. Oh, yeah, 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 there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. There you uh -huh. go. You know, I can, I'll try different perspectives. I also, I got the ZV-1. Oh, I got nice. the ZV-1, of course. And then, of course, I have the yeah. A7. But, dude, I, I don't know about this. I might sell it. Yeah. I'm not using it. I, I connected it, and, and honestly, the ZV-1, going through Camlink, was better. Really? I, I mean, it's easier to use. Yeah. I think I might get rid of this. I'm not using it. A7 yeah, S3. I mean, it's, it takes more setup. It's a little more, might not be your There's thing. so much more. Yeah, I, I, I really, um, I thought I would go that way, but you, you understand yeah. the, the gear, the gear infatuation and then what really works out in real life. Yeah, just less is more. Less is so, more. Okay. Um, fantastic. I, 
I'm glad that we got a, a chance to test this out. Hey, man, thanks for letting me check in, Rick. Yeah, take care, man. Okay, that is way better. This has been bugging me for weeks and now I can leave with peace of mind knowing that my desk is way more usable. Onward. So I spent all afternoon organizing my camera gear to make sure I've got everything I need for this trip and I thought I would just walk you through what I'm using to make these videos with these days. So I am a Sony shooter. I have two Sony A7 III bodies. This one looks like a big beast because I've got it in a cage which I'll talk about here in a second. And this one is just naked because I use this one more for running and gunning or selfies or that kind of stuff. Uh, but they're identical. Sony a7 threes and they're okay. They, I, I'm a fan of Sony products. I, I made the switch to Sony. I used to be a Nikon shooter and I had so much money invested in Nikon gear. I had a ton of lenses, and, but they kind of lagged behind on the video front. So I made the leap to Sony and I've been pretty happy with these cameras. Uh, the one thing I don't like about the Sony, at least the A3s, is they don't allow very high frame rate at 4K. I'm, I can uh, only get 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second at 4K. Most of the time, that's what I'm shooting. I'm doing 24 frames per second at 4K. Uh, if I want to do 60 frames per second, I have to go down to 1080. Uh, which is not so great. I'm lusting after the Sony Alpha 1, the new Sony Alpha 1, which is just amazing, but they're $6,000 just for the body. Uh, and it does 120 frames per second at 4K. That's really my dream rig. Uh, but for now, this is, this is what I have. So on the small guy, I'm generally running a 24 millimeter lens. This is a 24 2.8. It's a nice little lens. 24 is, I think, the perfect focal length for recording jujitsu. If people are rolling and you're, 
you're moving around trying to run yourself around, which is generally what I use the big rig for. But 24 works great. A lot of times with this guy, I put it on a, uh, on a little selfie stick. And I wish I remember the name of this product. This was a Kickstarter project. And I put a clamp on it. So we can do that. And 24 millimeter is kind of perfect for this sort of thing. It works great. And again, I can then set it up like a tripod. So that's really great. One thing um, you might notice is the, the clamp. I'm a huge fan of really right stuff clamps. I have these clamps on all my gear. It's on that tripod. It's on, I've got three or four tripods. They all have really right stuff clamps. These are very expensive. The big downside is they're super expensive. The upside is they are amazing and I can interchange all my gear really, really fast. Um, and these things will last forever. I mean, I've had some of these clamps like 15 years and they're brand new. They will ne literally never wear out. So huge fan of this stuff. I also have a 55 millimeter lens, a 1.8. This is a really great lens. Most of the time when I'm shooting my podcast or if I'm here in the confessional, uh, I'm shooting with the 55 millimeter. I also have a 35 millimeter. This is just a little cheapy. I'm a huge fan a 35 millimeter as a focal length. Um, this is a 2.8 lens. This one's a 1.8. Um, this 24 is a 2.8. All right, let's talk about the big guy. So this looks a little bigger than what it is. It's actually the same camera as this guy, but I have it in a cage. And it's real modular, real easy to set up. So we can take all that off uh, for storage. I'm generally running a 24 to 105 lens on here. This is probably my most versatile lens. This is only an F4, so it's not a real fast lens, but it is fairly versatile for running and gunning and, and doing that sort of thing. And again, I can set this up as a rig, which is, is pretty useful. When I'm shooting jujitsu, I usually have this set up as, as a rig so that I can either shoot this way, which is great for stability, or I can hold it from the handle to get those low shots. The key to shooting jujitsu, in my opinion, is being close to the action and being able to follow the action, getting really close. And so you just need to get in there and be able to shoot. Uh, and so that's how I use this rig. Generally, I have a shotgun mic on it. Uh, the ball head that attaches this, I'm using for my iPhone. I'm shooting this on my, on my iPhone, by the way. And so usually I have a shotgun mic. I'm using Sennheiser mics. Uh, these are pretty high-end mics and they let you run them using a battery, uh, which is really nice. So normally with a, a, a Sennheiser like that, I've got two of these. You have to run it using phantom power, 48 volt phantom power, but these both allow you to use uh, a battery and then I can attach it here. And what's cool about this is I can, I can put this on a tripod and run a cable to it. I can, uh, I can put it on this camera when I'm running and gunning. Again, I don't have the ball head. I'm using it here and there at the moment. Um, when I'm running and gunning, especially in Wyoming, I usually put a dead cat on it. If you're shooting outside, um, you know, and there's wind, this is the only way to get decent quality audio. So a lot of times I'll have this guy on there. Sometimes on this rig, I will put an external monitor and it's, it attaches really the same way. I've got a little clamp here. And I can attach 
and then we go this way. Sometimes I will face this forward if I'm doing some solo stuff and I don't have a way to frame the shot, I have to stand in front of it. Uh, I, I will put the monitor facing forward or we can go backwards. Additionally, sometimes we use this monitor on, on the gimbal so I've got a D DJI gimbal. Um, usually this camera is the one that goes on here because it's smaller and lighter and you have to balance it. But in order to be able to see what you're doing, you need an external monitor. So usually we'll go on the side. And then we can just slide this guy on. And now I have a monitor that I can rotate. Let's say we're getting high shots or whatever with the gimbal. And that's basically all I use. I do have some ND filters. Got a bunch of these filters. I'm a big fan of variable, um, variable NDs. Like this one, I can rotate and get up to, I think it's nine stops. It'll go completely black or it'll let some light through. And so when you're shooting outside, if you're trying to do low apertures like 2.8 or 3.5 or so on, and you're outside, there's a lot of light, you'd need to use an ND. So that goes on this big lens. And I also have an adapter, a little adapter ring, so I can put this on any of the small lenses as well. Uh, and that works really well. I've got a couple of those. Uh, I've got another small ND. This one only does, I think this one does two stops of darkening. And then I've got a couple other small ND filters. Uh, so that's basically it. I've really tried to pare this down to the essentials. And I think this is pretty much as little as I can get away with and get the results that I want. Again, if I had the money, I would buy the Alpha One bodies. I'd love to have two of those. If I could, um, if I had a little more money, I would probably swap out this 35 millimeter for like a really high-end 35 millimeter lens. Um, and that's basically it. I keep my cards in this Think Tank photo wallet. I've always used these and those work great. Um, for cleaning, I'm a fan of a little bulb to blow the air off the camera sensor. Uh, I'm a fan of these lens pens to be able to clean the lens with. That's pretty much what I use. Uh, I have this little loop that you can light up. It's a magnifier and it lets me look at the sensor to see if it's dirty. Right, so I can look in here. And I've had that for a long time. I don't even remember what brand that is. And pretty happy. I put it all in a Think Tank photo bag. This is the Airport Airstream, I believe. I used to have the bigger version of this, but the reality is when you're flying on airplanes, you need to be able to get your camera gear onto the plane and not down below with with the luggage um, and the only way to ensure that you can do that is by having a case that's small enough to either put above or below under the seat in front of you um, this thing has saved my butt a bunch of times getting my gear on a plane and so it's um pretty small but it works great and it's a rolling bag you can roll it through airports and so i again i used to have the, the bigger version of this bag but it was a little too big. It worked great on big airplanes, but on smaller ones, hopper planes, they wanted it down below. And so I end up switching. I, th I think that's it. Uh, I hope you're interested in this sort of thing, a little nerdy, but for some of you that are getting into this kind of thing, you might be interested. So hope you found that interesting. My target is 150 grams of protein a day, so we tend to grill up a lot of meat a couple times a week, just trying to get my protein intake. I'm actually trying to bulk a little, gain some muscle mass, but I don't know. 
I've been trying forever. We'll see if this time works. So anyway, I will see you guys on the road. We get ready to leave in a couple days and we're heading to Mendocino, California. Looking forward to it. I'm going to vlog every day. Join me. See ya.